I'm making a chili reno casserole. And what makes it a little different is a chili reno is a poblano chili that's roasted, peeled, and seeded. And they, you cut it open, put cheese in it, and then it's typically coated in a batter and deep fried. They're very delicious. But this is a casserole version. It has all the same ingredients, but it's just a lot easier. And you can serve it for brunch. It makes a great brunch item, dinner, Mexican fiesta night to go along with your tacos. So this is the chili that I'm using. Um, what I'm going to do is roast them first. So what I mean by roasting them is you can do them on your barbecue grill outside your gas grill. That works the best, I think. Or you can do them inside under your broiler. You can also do them in a frying pan. You want to blacken all the skin and then when they come out, you just peel the skin off and it gives the pepper a nice roasty flavor. Um, it's a key step to the whole dish. So I have my peppers here on a dish that I put some tin foil. These I'm going to do in the broiler. So they're going to go in the broiler and every you know, half a minute, every minute, I'm gonna check them. And when they're black on one side, you have to go in and turn them because you need to get all sides pretty blackened. And then we'll peel them and start our dish. So these are gonna go in. You can't walk away from this. You do need to watch these guys because there's a fine line between blackening the skin of the pepper and then incinerating the entire pepper, which then you can't use it. So I'm gonna cook these off and we'll be back. I've taken the chilies out of the broiler and this is key to peeling them. I put them into a plastic bag that you'll see, you see the steam coming out. What this does is it helps release the skin from the flesh of the pepper because we want to peel them. So they kind of hang out in here and you can see it's moist. Um, it's making a lot of hot air. So I'm going to peel one for you and when they come out they're very they look like this. I know it looks a little horrifying, but it, this is the way they're supposed to look. And the skin will just peel. You can see how wrinkly it is here. You can start it very carefully with a knife if you want. These are, per these are still pretty hot, but you just peel it right off. And it will come off in little, little sheets. And you don't have to get every single bit of the peel, but you want to you wanna get most of the skin. I mean, every bit of the skin. You want to get a good portion of it off and what's left behind is that delicious flavor, you know, kind of a nutty, caramely, it really makes the peppers delicious. So you have to take your time on this and if you want to use a knife, some people scrape them. I find that sometimes that takes off more than just the skin. So this is a little time consuming, but in the end you'll have it all peeled and then we will cut it open. I'll show you what we do when we cut it open. Get a little more off of this side. If you get a good grip on it, you can get some nice big sheets. This one's a good one. Big sheet of the skin. And that's, it'll just come off like that. Um, but don't worry if you don't get every bit. Okay, so then once you have it peeled, you're gonna pull the stem out because with the stem, are all the seeds and they're not especially they don't add anything to the pepper or how it tastes so you can just pull the stem a lot of the seeds will come off with the stem some won't then you're going to cut your pepper open I said this one's still pretty hot you're going to let yours cool a little more than this and any of the seeds that are left in there you're just going to scrape out if there's one or two in there that's okay not a big deal so you scrape the seeds out and up until this point, this is pretty much the same way you would make a chili reno um, in the traditional sense. It's not in the casserole. So there's your pepper. Once you have them all cleaned, they're going to go into a 9 by 13 inch baking dish that I've sprayed with cooking spray and put, lay the peppers in. You'll have them all cleaned and then I'll show you how to fill them finish the casserole and get it in the oven. So I've got one done, three more to do. Part of our chili reno recipe is it has a topping and the topping is going to be, first of all, we have to whip some egg whites. We're going to use three eggs. 
We're going to whip some egg whites and then we're going to combine the egg yolks with some flour and you'll see how it kind of comes together in a souffle type of manner. But this is pretty cool. I'm going to separate the egg whites. So I'm going to crack an egg in this dish here. Now, if this works, it's pretty neat. You take a plastic bottle and you squeeze it and then you put it over the egg yolk and then it sucks the egg yolk up in the bottle and leaves all the egg white down below. So you don't have to do that tossing back and forth from eggshell to eggshell and then it breaks the yolk. Is that pretty cool. Then you just dispense the egg yolk into the proper dish over there. This is neat. So I'm going to do it again because this is, this is real fun. I think kids would enjoy this greatly. I'm pretty <laughs> impressed with it. So there's my egg. Let's see if I can make it a hat trick for all you hockey fans. You'll know what that means. That is so cool. And there's the, I love this. So there we go. So now we've separated, <laughs> we've separated our egg yolks and I'll do three. I already have one done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to beat the egg whites so they have stiff peaks and then we'll keep finishing the recipe. The chilies, I've peeled them all and I've seeded them. You'll see that there's some seeds left. Don't sweat the small stuff. So they're ready to go. They're in my greased casserole dish. So I have some Monterey Jack cheese shredded. I bought it pre-shredded. You can cut up cheese from a block if you would like. Um, chili rellenos typically when I make them not casserole style, I'll put a, like a chunk of cheese in the pepper, but the shredded was on sale and it all ends up melted anyway. So you put a nice hunk of cheese because it truly is really about the cheese. But, so don't be stingy with the cheese. And I also um, sauteed a little red onion, not too much. Um, you can do that to taste if you want more onion, good. If you don't, that's fine too. So you can see how little, just to get a little oniony flavor onto each one, you can leave the onion out. I've made it without onion and it's just as yummy too. Okay, so there's that. Now you just try to reconstruct the pepper. You just sort of roll the pepper back up so it almost looks like it did before you cut it open, took the seeds out. So you have four. You can also make this in individual little dishes. If you have little like gratin dishes, you can make each one of these an individual serving, which would be nice for a brunch or something like that. And actually in this pan, you could probably get easily six, but I have four because I'm serving four people. So those are the chilies ready to go. And I'm going to show you the topping. I'm going to clean my hands, move this out of the way. Okay, so I had the three egg whites. You saw that cool way that I separated the eggs. I have three egg whites that I whipped into stiff peaks. They're in this bowl. They're ready to go. And then in this bowl, I am going to put a quarter of a cup of milk, just whole milk. Quarter, uh, I'm sorry, three quarters of a cup of whole milk. In that goes. I have three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour in that goes. I have my three egg yolks that I separated. They're going to go in just like that. And I'm going to put in some salt. I have some salt, a pinch of salt. That's good. That is it. I'm going to get out my mixer. This is a little loud, but this is a very effective mixer. And I'm just going to give this a light whisk. And have a little flour bath at the same time. That's okay. Easy. It's a lot easier using that than bringing out a whole big mixer. Whoops. Who oh, no. knew? Um, okay, so that's the flour. So now I'm going to fold this mixture into our egg whites, but you don't want to 
You need to fold it in, up and down, scoop up and over. You don't want to deflate your egg whites too much. So you have to kind of take your time, up and over. So it is, this is kind of like a souffle in my mind. Put the rest of that in there. Then when these are done, I'm going to uh, bake them at 350 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes until the topping is brown, light brown. And then you're going to broil it just to get the topping to have a nice deep brown color for just a minute. But you'll have to keep your eye on that because it goes quick in the broiler. So this is pretty good. So simple enough. This goes over the rellenos. Now, if you were doing chili rellenos, not casserole style, you would be dipping the peppers into this and then putting them in a deep fryer. So all in all, this is probably a little bit healthier because they're getting baked, not deep fried. And you're just gonna top, I'm gonna cozy them up together. Like I said, you could easily put six in this pan. I've got four. You just want Try to get most of the pepper covered. I'm not going to use all of this because I think I have plenty. All right, so this will go in the oven and 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll broil it and then we will serve them up. Well, these are the chili rellenos casserole. Smell wonderful. They're nice and brown and bubbly and gooey. And, and here's our Spanish rice that we made earlier. That looks wonderful. And Let's we, plate them up here. We do. We have some watermelon margaritas to go with. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna cut one out of here. It is like a souffle. It is. And he can't be, he can't be naked. No. Can't have that. So a little sour cream, a little green onion on that one, and that is how we'll serve it. Sounds good to me. Well, cheers. Cheers, Pam. This was fun Hope and delicious. It.